Hey, this is Pastor Michael Yurisha, and I want to invite you to hit that like and subscribe button and drop us a comment if you will. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you receive all of our updates. God bless you. Come on, let's get to the Word. Now, God's grace does not exclude us from doing good works. Somebody say amen. amen. Because we still are required by the Word of God. We're commanded to be busy in God's kingdom. It's all through the Bible. I'm just going to give you one couple examples here. If we're saved and we're sanctified, we're not under the law because the law cannot save you. Are you with me? Listen, you couldn't save yourself. You cannot keep yourself saved. So no amount of good works that you do, no amount of righteous living that you do, listen carefully, can add to your salvation. However, that does not give us an excuse not to do good works. On the contrary, our salvation should encourage us to do even more good works. Our good works is evidence of our salvation. We don't work for salvation. Our works are evidence of our salvation. We don't have to do good works. We get to do good works. Are you with me? Listen, I'm married. When I got married, I didn't have to love my wife. I had the privilege. I get, you're following me, somebody. I get to love my wife. So, because even though we are justified, we are still going to face judgment. What you talking about, Pastor? Okay. Here it is. We've talked about this several times. There's two judgments spoken about in the Word of God. The first judgment, because, you know, Matthew chapter 7, you know, don't judge me. You hear that saying today, because Jesus said, judge not lest you be judged. They completely turn that on its ear. But anyhow, there's two words in the Greek for judgment. One is krino. Krino is more like a reading of a verdict. In other words, if you die without Christ, on the other side, there are not going to be a court and a jury, and there's not going to be a judge, and you're not going to have a defense attorney, and there's going to be a balance of scales there in which way. No, 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 no. When you leave this life, you're only going to the sentencing, my friend. That's the crino. You're going to hell if you don't have Jesus. Read John chapter 3. It's already written. When you breathe your last without Jesus, honey, you're on your way to hell. It's just depending on what level of hell you're going to. You know there's levels of hell. All right. Another teaching, another day. The other word in the Greek language for judgment is bima. It's taking from the athletic games back in Athens when they had a little platform. It was called the bima seat. After they would run the race or how far they could run or how fast they would run, the winners huh, would come to the bema seat. The judge would judge them. He would bema them. He would take the crown, are you hearing me? And he would put it on the winners. When we face Jesus Christ, we, that's the judgment we're going to. The question is, how are you running your race? What kind of a crown will you receive on that day? All right, so now watch. Watch this. Ephesians chapter 2. We're going to walk through the Bible a little bit here. Uh, chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. For it is grace, I'm sorry, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not from yourself. It is the gift of of God. Not by works. Somebody say not by works. You cannot earn your salvation. Why? So nobody can boast. You have nothing to do with it. You can't earn it. So you have no, no, uh, no boasting power there. Verse 10. For we are God's handiwork, because this is left out by a lot of folk, this verse. For we are God's handiwork. We've been created in Christ Jesus to do what? Good works. Good works which God 
has already prepared in advance for us to do. So we don't have to do them. We get to do them. Because God, my Bible tells me, has already prepared it for me in advance for me to do. So God has already prepared these good works. He's already prepared these rewards for us to achieve. We just need to figure out and discover what it is. It's kind of like playing hide and seek, if you will. If I can make, make a kid's game out of it. So God has these gifts and these talents and these, uh, these goals and these works and these accomplishments and these uh, crowns and jewels that we need to go discover. But you'll never discover it if you're always on your assets. You've got to get up and get moving. The pew of the righteous is ordered of God. My Bible does not tell me that. What does it say? The steps. You've got to add some movement to your life and allow God to take you from glory to glory to glory to glory. But he can't drive a parked car. you got to put it in gear. you got to start moving and let the wind of God direct you into what direction he's going to take you. Come on, do I, do I got a witness in the house? So he's already prepared good works for us. Every believer's works will be judged. Here it is, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 12. We'll start reading there. It says, if anyone builds on this foundation, you're doing kingdom building. If you're using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is because the capital D-A-Y, that means the judgment day of God. It will bring it to light. It will be revealed. What? Our works, our foundational building will be revealed with fire and the fire will test the quality of what? Each person's work. If what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. You'll be still going to heaven. It, it'll be burned up. The builder will suffer loss, but yet will be saved, even though only as one escaping through the flames. And I can't speak for y'all. But listen, I'm looking forward to that day and hearing these words. Well done. My good and faithful servant, enter in to the joy of my father. Uh huh. Well done, meaning I did something. You can't be a doer unless you did something with the kingdom of God. Well done. I want to hear those words. Michael, you've invested your talents. Let, here, let me bless you with more. Here's what I do not want to hear on that day. Why did you bury the talent that I entrusted to you? That's Matthew 25 if you want to go read the reference. Everybody's given talents. Everybody's given gifts. What are you doing with them? What am I doing with them? Are we burying them in the ground or are we investing? Because the, if you read that parable that Jesus is speaking about, the one that had the one talent that buried it, he called him a wicked servant. He was still saved. Because you cannot work for your salvation. That whole thing in Matthew 25, let me, let me explain that real quick. It said he's thrown out into, cast out into outer darkness. The, the, the picture there is there's a wedding banquet going on inside like a building or inside of a tent or a tabernacle. But because he was cast out to the outer darkness, the outer darkness was outside the camp. It was outside the tent. It was where the beggars hung out. They never came in to the light. They never came in to the party. They were outside the camp. Listen, I want to be up and close with Jesus. Amen. I want to be face to face. I want to hear, well done, my faithful servant, with all that I've been trying. Come on, is there anybody with me in this house? Hallelujah. Hey, this is Pastor Michael Yorisha, and I hope you enjoyed today's short word. 
Now you can help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ all over the earth by simply hitting that like button, subscribing to our channel, and don't forget to hit the notification bell. And last but not least, share this message with all your friends and family. Well, God bless you and Maranatha. Jesus Christ is coming soon.